Hi, this is Ron from POC Culture. Amy, Justin, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, uh, excited to speak with both of you. I have to say, I'm a little bit astounded by the ambitiousness of Strange World. Um, Amy, could you talk a little bit about, you know, the true world building that went into creating um, a world like this for Strange World? Yeah, I mean, it all starts with really creative and imaginative choices that our VizDev team was coming up with. Um, it's one of the most fun meetings I think Justin and I get to be in is when they're presenting their work to the directors and what could this world look like? And it's um, it can be so many different types of things and seeing how they were creating like design choices for some of the creatures. Uh, like you said, it was an incredibly complex uh film and uh, there's so many interesting and imaginative choices with this. And Justin, building off that, when the VizDev team is coming to you and to you both and bringing all these ideas, what really kind of stood out to you and got you excited? Um, I think for us, one of the things that was the most exciting, especially about the, the creatures is there's a decision early on made that nothing has faces. Um, I think in a lot of cases, we Obviously, we rely on things like faces to communicate. We rely on dialogue to communicate. Um, but I think if you talk to most animators, we are often the most excited when you give us a scene that has no dialogue. And we are uh, somehow more excited when there's no dialogue and no face. And we got to really figure out how to explain what we're trying to explain. Um, but with it becomes about pure shape, pure visual storytelling. Um, so I think that was a lot of fun. We saw it and we're excited and scared simultaneously. Yes. <laughs> I feel like excited and scared might be the theme of this film, at least what we've seen so far. <laughs> yes. Yeah. To that point about no faces and dialogue, Splat comes to mind. Um, it was a very interesting new character. Amy, um, what were some of the inspirations and what can you share about the development of Splat? Yeah, I don't know that there were any inspirations really for Splat. Jin, I don't know how Jin came up with the design for that character. I We saw it and we were like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, but really challenging with all of those limbs. And we wanted to make sure that Splat you know, wasn't walking like a human. Splat could be, you know, walk on any of the tentacles. Uh, Splat could do a cartwheel to get from one place to the next or maybe move like a spider. Um, it was... It, Splat was really lent, and the animation team had so much fun animating that character. There was definitely a team of people that kind of became Splat specialists, and they had to come up with ways to communicate an idea or something that needed to happen in a scene in a way that because they have no faces, they can't just talk. So how are we gonna communicate that with body language and posing choices? And we laughed so many times while we were making this film um, because people, the animators were bringing such entertaining choices. I love that. Now, Justin, both you and Amy worked on Raya and the Last Dragon and Moana, um, two films I love so much. Um, what, if anything, did you both bring from that experience and kind of helped you in developing Strange World? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, for me, I think what, what we hope to bring to every show is like a curiosity to understand and a curiosity to do something different. I think um, with a, films like Moana and with films like Ryan the Last Dragon, a lot of that comes down to us doing research about um, other cultures and, and other people and um, other mythologies and things like that. Um, and on this show, there isn't a whole lot of that to dig into because it's not a thing that exists. But I, I think for us, we we really try to take that sort of observational ability and, and our ability to look at things and understand how they're constructed and how to reproduce that in a caricatured way and kind of brought that to like, I don't know, I guess the way that we think about animation um, and the way that we think about how we do things as a, as a Disney animation studio when we're making a film um, with the hopes of, of really letting people have fun and giving them some guardrails that puts us in an interesting direction, but uh, still has a whole lot of freedom in it. Yeah, I, th that. I think, sorry, uh, with working, because we worked very closely with Don and Kui uh, on Ryan, The Last Dragon, and something that 
I think is similar between the two films is the amount of trust that Don puts in to us as heads of animation and our supervising team, and then also our animators, it really lends the animation team to feel like they can bring something to the table and come up with those unexpected choices that are really fun and entertaining. And generally, Don and Kui in Animation Dailies are like loving what people were bringing. And it, I think because of that trust, it gives people the opportunities to try things and go further than maybe what they would have thought because director, they were just loving everything that they were seeing, so. Well, I've loved what I've seen so far. I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, exciting and scary uh, for this film. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> Thank chatting you. with me. Yeah, thank you.